What the f*** was that? James, it's all three. There's something loose between my legs. You mean like forever? I don't know! Trippin' major nutsack. Come on! No more radio for the rest of the race. Hello everyone and welcome along to the Reserve Drivers as we preview the big one, the 2022 Australian Grand Prix. Oh Tim, the Australian Grand Prix is only... Five. Sleeps away. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. This is the Australian Grand Prix oh. preview. This is the podcast three years in the making. <laughs> it's been cancelled twice before. Judging by the material we've got this week, it will be cancelled a third time, but we're live at Albert Park where the stage is set. There it is there, oh. Goo Ricardo, <laughs> Goo Ricardo. I think that might be a typo, but Goo Ricardo. A little bit mean to feature Ricardo's point scores for the year. I think that's a little bit of a kick in the teeth, but that is, of course, for Heineken's zero alcohol beer. Uh, judging by that, they have zero idea how to spell his name. No, we've got to get gooing. We've got a lot to get on with. Uh, we've got to Let's get gooing. Let's go on with it. Let's Come go on. on with it. Well, we can't wait for the Australian Grand Prix, and we can't wait to watch it all on our friend of the show, sponsor of the show, KO, KO are back, Loki boy. They're back and we could not be happier, Tim. All more surprised. It is great to have KO back. Watch the Australian Grand Prix ad break free during racing only on KO. We're thrilled to have KO as the official sponsors of the mm. Reserve Drivers, Tim. And we're also thrilled to have the Saudi Stormtroopers as the unofficial sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Stormtroopers of the show. Art installation of the show. Good to see that the Stormtroopers are using a shake weight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I loved watching the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, mm. Lukey boy. So much exciting on-track action. It was an incredible race. So much to be excited about. But Jensen Button, he was more excited about this. Good evening to you all in Mexico. Or should I say good morning? Because guess what, Jensen Button? It's 11 o'clock for the race start in Mexico. Wow. 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 The 11 o'clock start in Mexico. That was what Jensen Button was most excited about. Right down to the 11th hour, Tim. <laughs> wow. But I was just excited to have mm. Jensen Button back in the commentary box where he belongs. You are a big butthead. <laughs> okay, we're not going to say that. We're not going to say that. <laughs> Jensen Button was all over the action in Saudi Arabia, all over Checo Perez's first ever pole position, and Jensen Button had nothing but praise for Sergio Perez. Oh, I'm really proud of him. He, he's worked so hard in this team all, well, most of the time. Oh, <laughs> Jensen, what a low blow. Oh, gee. Some commentators provide analysis, Lukey boy. Yep. Jensen Button provides anecdotes. Yeah, three tenths in the first sector. It's, uh, it's hurting Max quite a bit. I remember it was back in 2010. Um, I ran a high wing around Monza. <laughs> Wow, what a story. A high wing around Monza. Totally unrelated to what they were talking about, but a great story nonetheless. But I love Crofty and Jensen together mm, in the commentary box. Clearly. Boy. <laughs> just a little bit, because Crofty commentates, mm. and Jensen just agrees. It's a bit of a voyage into the unknown for these cars. It is. Uh, there's a hairpin coming up soon, JB. There is. It's a lot steeper <laughs> in real life than it looks on the TV. It is, it is. Leclerc's making that advantage pay, isn't he, tonight? He is. Surely you're at an advantage. You are. He was in the wrong place at the right time. Yeah, he was. Because he can see how much closer the Ferrari is. He can. But he's going to be vulnerable. <laughs> he is. Because that's going to be a safety car, surely. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Uh, well done, Jensen. I would kill for a working partner who supported me like <laughs> Jensen did to Crofty. Well, the only person Jensen disagrees with <laughs> is Jensen. Max has had a good first first sector, but it's, it's, no, it's not a good first sector. He's, he's actually about four tenths down. Of course, Crofty was in Saudi Arabia, Lukey boy, in fine form behind the mic. It's looked a better car uh, for Lewis. I, I saw your old race engineer, Andrew Shovlin, uh, before the race. Uh, as we look at uh, Mike Crack. Whoa, oh. Crofty, you cannot say that. We can't be looking at Mike Crack. I tell you what, that must make for an interesting segment of Ask Crofty. <laughs> Ask Crofty about the sounds of things. <laughs> anyway, that's what we saw, Lukey boy. Yeah. Crofty was seeing something different. I saw your old race engineer, oh, Andrew no. Shovlin, uh, before the race. Uh, oh, as we no. look at uh, Mike Crack. I tell you what, the Saudi Arabian moon wasn't as, <laughs> <laughs> as on show as that one. <laughs> it was a big win for Red Bull, Tim, with Ferraris finishing second and third. Mm. Uh, Charlo was pretty happy, but Carlos, not so much. He struggled in Bahrain. He's picking up the pizzas. Oh, he's picking up the pizzas. He's picking up the pizzas. He's picking up the pizzas. Oh, I mean, no. he's going to fit in in Italy, Lukey <laughs> Bob. He's picking up the pizzas. Racial profiling. <laughs> oh, my you ancestors. All, you of all people should know better than that. Oh, my ancestors are rolling in the grave. That's right. I'm sure he can only look, look past that, Lukey <laughs> Bob. I'm sure he can only look past that. Listen, I'm allowed to say that. You're not. <laughs> but after a tricky week in Bahrain, Carlos finished P3 in Saudi Arabia. And he's moving on, Tim. He's moving on. And uh, what direction is he moving in? I think I did a step forward in the right direction. 
direction. And I managed to do a step in the right direction. A small step in the right direction. <laughs> On my side, step in the right direction. We already did a step in the right direction. <laughs> Keep doing steps in the right direction. It's onwards and upwards for Carlos. Would it kill you to take a step in the right direction? You're taking three steps back. You got to go backwards to go forwards, Tim. <laughs> Are they going for the championship or dancing with the stars? It is tough to tell what they're doing at Ferrari. <laughs> so Carlos, Sainz and Ferrari, they're moving in the right direction, Tim. But uh, at McLaren, are things looking up? Positivity only wears up, I feel, for you guys at the moment. No, it's n no. <laughs> no, that, the only way is not up. For us, it can also be down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Rosanna at the end. Oh, Lando, you got to give us something. No, but Rosanna, the professional, the ultimate professional that she is, she tried again to give a little bit of a cheery approach to the McLaren disposition. Maybe even Monza again, you might be right back up there. No, there's a lot of slow speed corners <laughs> and straights, and we're not good in either of those. On that positive note. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tim, when a Frenchman is offering the positive note, <laughs> you know things are grim. In an interview between two men, and one's a Frenchman, and it's the other guy who's surrendering, that's when you know things are, things are not quite the right way around. Look, one of the reasons for the crazy on-track mm. action, Tim, was because it was windy, blustery conditions in Jeddah. Uh, in, in the studio as well. I'm sitting next to you after lunch, and it is very windy in here, mate. Salmon and capers <laughs> always does it. It was so windy in Jeddah, Tim, they could barely make the beds. Look at the bed sheets here. Yeah, they're good. At, it's, it's impossible. Wow, lightweight material. What a metaphor for this show, Luke Boy. <laughs> and do we know what caused the wind in Saudi Arabia? As we look at uh, Mike Crack. Tough weekend for Mercedes, Loki boy. What is going on at the Silver Arrows, dear Tim? Lewis Hamilton missed out mm. on Q2. First time th since 2017. First time since, since 2017. <laughs> uh, just to repeat exactly word for word what you just said. Uh, I'm sounding a bit like Jensen Button in here. It was. It is. Lewis Hamilton, he was kicked out of Q1, mm. Loki boy. I think Jensen Button, our man, summed mm. it up best. Lewis Hamilton has been knocked out in Q1. No, it's... I Speechless as she is. Can we get her in the commentary box instead of Jensen? It might make a bit more sense. Like we boy. can. <laughs> But all jokes aside, Tim, it is shocking news. Is this the end of the Mercedes reign? Mercedes, they've got a lot of work to do to catch up to Red Bull and Ferrari, which means Mercedes' strategic minds have got to get to work, <laughs> which means for us, Leaky Boy, it's time for Fifty Shades of Mercedes. The intention with Lewis was to try and pull them out of grip on the hards, <laughs> to experiment on the weekends. We therefore needed to get off on that hard rubber. Get on top of this famously rough ass. It is a big job. It's a job that never really ends. The rubber gets really beaten up. Behind us, it comes into the rubber. What we're doing this week is digesting that. Perhaps we've bitten off more than we can chew with it, but we are very good chewers in this team. <laughs> They're very good chewers in this team. Well done to Mercedes. That is out of control. That is outrageous. And just quickly, can we have a look at that famously rough ass? As we look at uh, Mike Crack. Look, it is tough times down at Mercedes. Morale is low. Mm. And what do you do when morale is low? You inject a bit of youth. And mm. uh, I'd like to turn your attention to the Mercedes Patronus internship collaboration there. Mm. These are a bunch of kids who are doing an internship at Mercedes. Kind of like you on the show, Lukey Boy. <laughs> when will that run out? It won't. <laughs> Uh, it will. <laughs> it can. <laughs> and these kids are smart, Tim, because have a listen to when Toto Wolf is having a chat to them, how they schmooze up to the boss. Yeah. Numbers is data. <laughs> 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 he brought the house down. Numbers is data. Dude, yeah. we would kill for a reaction like that on this show, Lucky Boy. We'd kill for some numbers. <laughs> Actually, they were laughing because they'd just seen Lewis Hamilton's qualifying numbers, and they are funny. <laughs> So much exciting on-track action, Lukey boy. But as always, even more exciting off-track action. So like an F1 show that has run out of segments, it's time for the return of... Like a fruit machine at an arcade. Like Pavlov's dog liquor, buried it in surgery. Like the inside of a ball of mozzarella cheese. Like an octopus <laughs> fighting an octopus. Like a caged tiger. Like a choir boy. Like a whale. Like he's got razor blades on his elbows. As a forestry, doesn't he? Meta Formula One. A lot of great metaphors off track in Saudi Arabia, Lukey boy. Don't ever wink at me again. <laughs> but there were some great metaphors from our man, David Croft. Here he is talking about Alonso and Ocon's battle. Alonso squeezes back past the Alpine again. Uh, this, oh, this is like a classic soap opera. It's going to run and run and run. <laughs> But if it is Coronation Street, they wouldn't want to be next door neighbours, these two, the way this is going. Paul DeResta. <laughs> beautifully summed up, Crofty. Absolutely beautifully summed up. There's nothing Saudi Arabian F1 viewers love more than Coronation Street. I'm more of a the bill man <laughs> myself. Crofty managed to go back to back, Luke, oh, wow. with another metaphor on the twists and turns of the Jetta circuit. You flick left and right. It's like 
It's like slalom skiing without the slope going through there. It is. It <laughs> is. Trust Jensen to agree, Luggy boy. And Jensen even had a go oh. at a meta formula. A newbie. That's what's great about Formula One right now. It's like we're... <laughs> oh, Jensen. Oh, no. If you're going to do a meta formula, you've got to have a metaphor ready. That is a black and white meta formula flag. <laughs> Although with that dead silence, Luggy boy, that is a great metaphor for this show. That is a perfect <laughs> metaphor for the reserve drivers. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, it was a mixed weekend for Haas. Crash for Mick Schumacher in qualifying. Kept him out of the race. Yeah, thankfully all okay. And then K-Mag brought it home with some points. Mm. I want you to take a listen to this interview with Gunther Seiner. Our man, the Gunt. <laughs> Gunt of the show. <laughs> Big fans of the Gunt. Uh, he's being interviewed by F1 journalist Chris Medlin on the Sirius XM show Speed City. Uh, last year, uh, for two points, uh, I mean, I would have fucked uh, the whole paddock, you know, so... <laughs> What? <laughs> what? The Gunt is excited, Tim. <laughs> and when a Gunt is excited, you've got to be very careful. Uh, see, look, you might have heard some racy language there, but the Gunt was quick Was quick to clarify what he meant. Back what of the did grid. you say you would do to the whole whole paddock? Huck them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not sure that's better. I'm not sure that's better, to be honest. Look, I don't know how, how he's hugging. I'm not sure how he's hugging. <laughs> 50 Shades of the Gunt. That's going to be coming soon. We're dancing around the big story, Lucky Boy. The big F1 news from the week that F1 will be returning to Las Vegas. Oh, Sin City, baby! In 2023 for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. What to use its official title? The Formula One Las Vegas Grand Prix. The Grand Prix. It's going to be a Grand Prix for the ages, Lucky Boy. It's going to be an amazing Grand Prix. There is something with Americans and calling a Grand Prix a Grand Prix. It's such an amazing Grand Prix. Well, it wasn't just the Grand Prix that they got wrong, Lucky Boy. They managed to stuff up the names of the people who are at the event. And it is more than my esteemed honor to welcome on stage with us Stefano Domenicali, the president and CEO of F1, and Greg Maffei, the president and CEO of Liberty Mutual. <laughs> Stephanie? Media. <laughs> anyway. It's all right. Thank you, Amanda. I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. I mean, if we got that name right. Stephanie from Liberty Mutual. No. Look, they, okay, they couldn't get the names right, Lucky Boy, but if there's one thing they got right, mm. it's that classic Las Vegas expression. Uh, what happens in Las Vegas only happens in Las no, Vegas. No, <laughs> it stays in Las Vegas. And he and he's the governor of Las Vegas. I'm pretty sure he was talking about the, the Formula One race. <laughs> There's 23 others in the calendar year. So it only happens in Las Vegas. <laughs> Tim, that of course was the governor of Nevada. There, the, the one man who should get that expression right. Governor Sizlak. Mm, Sizlak of the show. <laughs> Sizlak of the show. And uh, I was going to say, uh, do we have footage of Governor Sizlak? <laughs> That is not Governor says like, how dare you? But you called it, Tim, all the big names. Mm. Stephanie Domenicali, <laughs> Liberty Mutual, Governor Sislak, and even this guy was there. Uh, we have Bill Hornbuckle here. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's about to burst at the Bill Hornbuckle there. Like, you know, that, that Bill Hornbuckle is doing a fair chunk of work on him. <laughs> Never get your Hornbuckles and your Sislaks crossed, Tim. Hornbuckle of the show. <laughs> Do we have footage of when your Hornbuckle isn't done up well? <laughs> As we look at uh, Mike Crack. It was great for all of them. It's great for Stephanie Domenicalo, <laughs> Liberty Mutual, Governor Sislak and Bill Hornbuckle. And it's great for everyone involved in the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Such a great race for not only the fans, for the teams, for the constrictors. It's great for the constrictors. Amazing for the constrictors. The Vipers too, the Cobras too, the Anacondas. They're all loving it. Those boas are out. <laughs> That's funny, Tim, because I've described a couple of those Liberty Mutual executives as a bit of a snake. Mm. Snakes in the grass over oh, there. Bill Hornbuckle's not going to be a fan of you, Lucky <laughs> Boy, no doubt about that. Bill Snake was caught in his hornbuckle, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> As we've said, all the big mm. wigs were live on stage, Lucky Boy. Stephanie Dominicali, Liberty Mutual, <laughs> Governor Sislak, Bill Hornbuckle. <laughs> but I got the feeling there was one guy on stage who shouldn't have been there. I have to imagine the creativity and the adaptability to pull <laughs> something off like this is just mega. How did you do it? Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> he, he didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> that guy's a day late in a hornbuckle short, Tim. <laughs> Speaking of sayings, there was another one floated around at the launch. As they say in F1, it's lights out and away we go Las Vegas. <laughs> we do not say that. No, we do. You remember that classic footage. It's lights out <laughs> and away we go Las Vegas. 
But speaking of old footage, Leaky Boy, this is not the first Las Vegas Grand Prix. Mm. Back in 1981 and 1982, Las Vegas hosted the Caesars Palace Grand Prix. Oh, I didn't know that. They hosted a Las Vegas Grand Prix in 1981, and it was the start of something special. This was actually the end of Formula One racing in Las Vegas. <laughs> okay. It didn't go too Ooh. well. It didn't go down too well. The race was a total failure, which was a real surprise given mm. the, the lengths they went to to design the circuit. <laughs> we drew the racetrack on the back of a placemat. That's how the best F1 tracks are designed, Leaky Boy, on the back of a placemat. I could name a couple of current <laughs> F1 tracks who I reckon... That was the original promoter of the 1981 Las Vegas Grand Prix, Leaky Boy, and it's fair to say he hasn't lost any of his enthusiasm for Las Vegas F1. Bill Weinberger in 1981. Auto racing is, is an excuse to have a party. Bill Weinberger in 2022. He was like... Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Weinberger's lost it. He couldn't care less. An, an apathetic Weinberger is not a good Weinberger. <laughs> He's the only person whose surname is a meal and the recommended <laughs> beverage. That is fantastic. Hey, forget Crosby, Stills and Nash. <laughs> have had Hornbuckle, Sizzlack and Weinberger. Well, he works closely with Warren Coke Sushi. <laughs> uh, of course, the hope is with the Las Vegas Grand Prix. Mm. It will not only attract domestic fans to our area. But the rest of his car as well. <laughs> Good news, Las Vegas 2023. Yeah, Mercedes no pods, eat your heart out. <laughs> Tim, I was scrolling through the internet as I like to do, and I came across this video. Mike Crack? Not that video. Long video. Clear Long search bit. history, I think. <laughs> what was the video? Cognito video. <laughs> um, it was this. We got a, an assortment of uh, resistance bands, some juggling balls. Alongside that, we've got a uh, uh, blaze pod system. That is Max Verstappen's trainer uh, talking about everything he stole from Sergio Perez. <laughs> that is incredible. So that's a backpack full of his training kit. It's what they bring to every race to stay equipped. And you know what I thought I'd do? I'd pull back the curtain, pull right. back the fourth wall and just, um, you know, let our viewers know uh, that what I bring in my backpack mm. um, before a recording. So I'll just grab my backpack and you just do some filler. <laughs> sure. I mean, there won't be any jokes in there. So I'm, I'll be very interested to see okay. what's in your backpack. All right. Now, the last time we saw what was in your backpack, that was an episode of Border Security. <laughs> and there was, there was some animals in there that we can't show. All right. So let's take a look at what I've got here in my backpack. What's, okay. in, what's in Luke Rocker's <laughs> reserve yeah. driver's backpack? Backpack. This is just what we bring. I've got some cheese. Oh, that's all right. In, cheese in case we need to make a serious point about F1 yeah. aerodynamics. <laughs> exactly right. You might remember for those long-time viewers, Chase Carey's moustache. Moustache of the show. <laughs> that is an N95 moustache, by the way. Personal protective moustache. <laughs> Very COVID safe, yeah. I always bring with me my uh, copy of Simon Lazenby photo. The smooth uh, operator the smooth himself. himself. Smooth <laughs> operator. Smooth operator. I have a former unofficial sponsor of the show, Heineken, That's that I take right, with me. Yeah, and there's yeah. alcohol in that. So that is gooing over here. <laughs> um, and you can drink that in uh, our Gunter Steiners. Remember that? From the Austrian from, Grand Prix, yeah, the Gunter the, yeah. Steiners. I had a drink out of one of those and I felt absolutely f***ed. So you've got to be careful when drinking from the Gunter Steiners. Yeah, it's funny. I had a drink from that and I wanted to hug everybody <laughs> in the paddock. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, what else have we got here? Oh, it's my restraining order. <laughs> It's either from Daniel Ricciardo or three of your ex-wives. I don't know who that's from. And then what else do I bring here? Oh, what's this? KO! A $50 KO voucher. $50 voucher to our friends of the show, KO. That will go a long way, Lukey boy. Well, every F1 <laughs> race is on KO. Every sport is on KO. And look, I thought you're doing all the ads, you're getting all the money. <laughs> so this is a little something for myself. That is going to go a long way. Unlike the cheeses, <laughs> which appear to have gone off. We've been going for so long, but these cheeses are now off. <laughs> they bought them at a quick sale as well. <laughs> Well, the 2022 Australian Grand Prix is almost here, Lukey boy, and I'm excited to see cars on track, racing action out on track, but I'm even more excited to see Martin Brundle's grid walk back on track. So with that in mind, let's take a trip down memory pit lane. I've gone back through the Reserve Drivers Archives. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and I've watched every single Martin Brundle Australian Grand Prix grid walk. And if you think he's adding mayo to that, <laughs> look at him. Look uh, at how pale. I wish I was adding KO to that because that would have been more interesting, Lukey Boy. So I found some memorable Martin Brundle Australian Grand oh. Prix grid walk moments. Strap yourself in. <laughs> Possibly the longest segment title we've ever had, but you get the sense Martin loves being on the grid here in Australia. Welcome, everybody. Nice to be with you again. Welcome to Nightmare on Pit Straight. Oh. Nightmare on Pit Straight, Lukey boy. <laughs> Clearly not a fan. Might be because none of the drivers want to talk to him. Mika. Mika. <laughs> Hello, Mika. <laughs> Are you interested to talk to me today? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, t t to the point where Mika Hakkinen had actually taped over his ears to avoid hearing Martin Rundle. Okay, Martin wasn't having any luck with Mika, so let's try a friend of the show, Nico Vlogsberg. It's a tough day today. One quick word, Nico. 
Okay, understand. I wish Nico's vlogs were that quick and silent, Lucky Boy. <laughs> Someone was trying to do a hard tag on Martin and I was trying to grab him. <laughs> he was being followed, Lucky Boy, and Martin's normally followed by a cameraman, but in 2005, he was being followed by someone else. For sure, we're thinking on that. Okay, good luck. Well, don't forget. Hello, Flavio. You okay? <laughs> oh, sorry, I've got to throw back. I'd love to talk to you, but next time. <laughs> talk to my lawyers. That is stalking. What is Flavio Briatore doing there? That adds a whole new meaning to Crashgate, Tim. <laughs> that was Martin Brundle's grid stalk. That was a totally different segment. Could we play that again, but with the psycho violins? <laughs> For sure, we're thinking on that. Okay, good luck. Well, don't forget. Hello, Flavio. You okay? Oh, sorry, I've got to throw back. I'd love to talk to you, but next time. That is scary. That is <laughs> Scary. But Martin Brundle, he gets the best out of F1 drivers. I loved his chat with Ferrari's Felipe Massa. What do you think, Luke? You think this is going to happen to talk to to talk to Felipe? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. We'll come back to him if we get half a chance. They never did, and I've got his restraining <laughs> order from Ferrari's Felipe Massa. Martin tried to get a hold of Kimi Raikkonen. Oh no. Kimi didn't want an interview, <laughs> so Martin suggested something else. He's going to ignore me anyway, but I've been ignored before. Get me a quick word. Just a quickie. Well, that got his attention. There's a little smile there. That got his attention. I wish this segment would quickie <laughs> up. Six hours later. Martin does manage to speak to some people on the grid, Lucky Boy. He manages to get some insights from some technical wizards and engineering experts. Just before we get into the technical stuff, Kelly Osborne, how are you? <laughs> Kelly didn't want to be interviewed. Uh, Martin suggested a quickie and that was that, that was the end of that grid walk. Martin did manage to speak to Minardi driver Justin Wilson, lucky oh. boy, on the grid at Albert Park. And Justin Wilson, he's an expert in really difficult conditions. Justin, have you driven this car in the wet? No. Okay, first time for everything. <laughs> and look, Martin's a pessimist. Uh. But it's fair to say Justin Wilson is an optimist. I have to say, this is worst case scenario for your first ever Grand Prix with no wet practice or anything. What's going through your mind? Just to enjoy it. <laughs> so much to enjoy. It's going to be the worst race of your life, but just to enjoy it. Just to enjoy it. I have a similar attitude to when we record sometimes, Tim. <laughs> this is going to be the worst podcast of your <laughs> life, but just enjoy it. Martin did manage to chase down our man, friend of the show, Jensen Ooh. Button, for an exclusive interview. Button's got the two Renaults behind him on the grid. My understanding is that they've got the oh, same well, tyres. Oh. I thought it was him then. You can't recognise all the people in the same overalls, but uh, he's going to go around the front. Let's just get a quick go. Can we just come through there? Jensen! Go! He's gone. JB! <laughs> JB! It'll wait, it'll wait. Wow! Jensen that was, was off. Didn't want to be interviewed by Martin Brundle. Yeah, Martin just set the fastest lap around <laughs> Albert Park for that interview. But by far, Martin Brundle's best Australian GP grid interview, Lukey Boy. Wasn't with a driver, wasn't with Kelly Osborne. It was with this man. There's a, a lot of there's a, some mega stars are down here. We'll have a quick word with Nicholas Cage. Oh! Who, uh, oh. Nicholas, Nicholas, can we have a quick word for British television? Brother, how are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Nicholas Cage, clearly uh, in costume for his role as Bill Hornbuckle <laughs> from the Las Vegas Grand Prix. <laughs> And this is an amazing this interview. This is huge. A massive interview between two titans of the entertainment industry. Uh, your first Grand Prix? No, no, it's my second Grand Prix. Good stuff. Which is the other one? Montreal. Oh, how do you feel here? I feel very good. It's very exciting. It's a big day, you know. The energy's alive here. Yeah, shame the guest isn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is Nicolas Cage on about? Still in fairness, he's got more energy there than he did in Face Off. <laughs> in that movie, he's got more energy there. Careful, Timmy. In <laughs> fact, this is a great opportunity. Nicolas Cage fans, <laughs> abuse Tim in the comments. That is a savage section of the comments. You're in trouble, mate. I'm you happy, are in trouble. I'm happy to take all three of you on. <laughs> Come at me in the comments below. On that positive note. On that note, Lucky Boy, we've got to wrap up another week here at the Reserve Drivers. And look, Tim, none of this would be possible without our organising committee. Liberty Music. Mutual. Bill Hornbuckle. Bill Weinberger. Mike Crack. Big thank you to those guys. Couldn't do it without them. Big thank you to you for watching, for all your likes, your subscribers, and your comments. Please keep your comments coming. We love hearing from you. Tim, the next race is the Australian Grand Prix. It's here, and we're going to be watching it all unfold on our friend of the show, sponsor of the show, KO Lukey Boy. So watch the 2022 Australian Grand Prix ad break free during racing only on KO. It's finally time for the Australian Grand Prix. And like we always say, it's like Lights out, and away we go, Las Vegas!